John. Hello, John. <laughs> we'll have everybody in the place talking. When I go into that a room happens. full they of do people, that. and I start talking like that, in ten minutes, the whole place is talking like that. That's and funny. I can't remember what the original sounds like. You do pick up the rhythm of that. that that's uh, it's very contagious. When I was doing uh, the show, Get Smart, an actor would come on the show and we'd have a scene to do. I'd say, you go down to the drugstore and pick up the package. And he'd say, okay, I'll go down to the drugstore and pick up the package. The director would say, okay, let's go, roll them, action. i say, you'll go down to the drugstore and pick up the package. He said, okay, I'll go down to the drugstore. <laughs> cut. And the director would say, cut, that's not right. <laughs> and the electrician would say, it doesn't make any difference, a kiwi was out. <laughs> and I was, you know, then I'm trying to imitate them. because oh, that's weird. Um, How you been? I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, I've been fine. Uh, just, <laughs> that's it, huh? Just yeah, spent a few years screwing up my personal life. Uh -huh. I won't get into that. Okay. Last time I saw you, you just had been married, though, if I remember. One of the... Ah, uh, yes. Which one was that? Uh, we were on a plane. Where were we coming from? London? London. I was on my honeymoon. That was three years ago. That's right. That's right. Uh, that, that is really a... This is a true story, an absolutely true story, as John can tell you. I was, when I went to uh, Europe on my honeymoon, I was flying to Paris. So we got the travel agent and we bought coach tickets, uh, first class tickets right. to fly to Paris. So my manager called me up and he said, why are you going first class, Don? I said, I always go first class. I mean, this is ridiculous. I don't fly coach. He said, do you know the difference between coach and first class and money? I said, no. He said, it's about $2,500 for the two of you. I said, so what? He said, well, you sleep on the plane. He said, you take your second alls and you valley them and you go out like a light and you sleep for 13 hours. He says, so what's the difference if you're in coach or first class? He said, take the $2,500 when you get to Paris and buy a painting. I said, hey, sounds good. So I get on coach, I take my pills, I go to sleep, we fly over, we're all over Europe. Two months later, we end up in London. And we get on the plane going back, coach. And I'm in the back of the plane. It is packed. There is not one seat that is not taken on that plane. And I'm sitting three abreast, me, my wife, and some Arab. <laughs> and I'm saying, my God, 14 hours on this plane, I can't believe it. And the plane starts to take off, and it's up in the air about two minutes, and the stewardess comes over and hands me a note. And the note says, Dear Don, when dinner is served, we're going to give you a bowl, and you can come up to first class and beg. <laughs> Signed, Johnny Carson. <laughs> Johnny is in first class, and I'm in coach, and I'm embarrassed. I'm really embarrassed that I'm sitting in coach. <laughs> Two minutes later, the stewardess comes over, another note. Dear Don, I knew things were bad. I didn't know they were that bad. When we get to Los Angeles, if you need cab fare, don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> now I'm steaming. I call the steward over. I said, are there any seats in first class at all on this plane? He said, we only have two seats on the whole plane. They're in first class up against the oh, boards yes, there, you know, the two separate seats, right the bulkheads. I said, can I transfer my ticket? He said, of course, you're thousand dollars. I said, I don't care what it costs. I said, get me into first class. So he says, okay, he makes arrangements. Now we're only four minutes in the air, four or five minutes in the air, and I go into first class, and I don't even look at John. I just walk right past him, and we sit down in the, in the chairs, and the stewardess comes over. I said, get me a pencil and paper. And I write, dear John, if you had any brains, if you had any knowledge, if you knew anything about anything, you would know the statistics on flying that 80% of all crashes occur on takeoff, and 90% of all fatalities are in first class. That is why when I fly, I buy two tickets. <laughs> One for coach for takeoff, and one for first class for the flight. Only in the air. And that's it. We, we wrote notes. We wrote notes the entire trip, 14 hours. I don't think we ever we said never said, said a word to each other. Stewardess was just taking wrote notes, notes back. back and forth. I said, of course, on landing, remember? I said, look where you are when we have a bad landing. You're up in the... And it went back and forth all the way across the country. And Arnold Palmer was there. He was right. sitting right behind me. I was trying to sleep, and all I could hear was, well, I put three million into this, and I put four million into that, and eight million into this. And I thought, he and you should be sitting together. Yeah. <laughs> you ever miss the old days when you first started? Out scrambling a little bit? Well... Still playing the clubs. I first caught you, I think, at the... Uh, don't tell me. It was in San Francisco. The Hungry Eye. The Hungry Eye. I you... told you. Yeah. 
asked me not to tell That's you. That's right. I told you not to tell me. Asked you not to tell me that. Yeah. And we are. I don't really... I, when you look back on working strip joints and toilets and nightclubs and everything, it seems like it was fun. You were young then. Yeah. You know, I had some experiences. I once played... I was starving to death. And uh, I couldn't get a job. And I was with the William Morris Agency, which explains <laughs> why I couldn't get a job. Uh... So one day they called me and they said, we got a job for you. And I practically fainted. And I said, what is it? And they said, to tour with Mae West. And I said, Mae West, is she still alive? And they said, yes, and she's working the Latin Quarter in Boston and the Town Casino in Buffalo. And I said, well, my act is a kind of a she-she act of the Blue Angel or Ruban Blue. I said, I don't know. They said, well, it's $350 a week. And I said, $350 a week. And I said, I'll go. And I went up to Boston. And I got up there, and there was an agent from the William Morris Agency. I forget his name. I blocked it out. And uh, he came to me, and he said, Miss West would like to see you in her dressing room. I said, really? Okay. So I go into the dressing room, and there's Mae West, who looks, she's standing up, she's about 6'3". But I realize that she's got heels on that are about that high, and her hair is that high, and she has a hat that's that high. She takes off her shoes, her hat, and combs her hair. She's about this tall. <laughs> And she's 104 years old at this time. <laughs> and now she never talks to me directly. She calls over the William Morris agents and she whispers in his ear. And he said, she would like to hear your act. I said, here in the dressing room? He said, yes. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I start with my act. And I get to the first punchline and she goes like this. And she calls him over and she whispers in his ear. And he comes over and he whispers. He says, she doesn't like that line. I said, which line? And he tells me the line. I said, that's a punchline. She doesn't like it. I said, oh. He said, that's out. I said, okay. I went through the whole act. She edited out all the punchlines. She left me with 11 minutes of straight lines. So now it's opening night, and they're lined up. She hasn't appeared for years. They're lined up for five blocks. They get in. The place is packed as pandemonium, and I am a nervous wreck. And now they've got the dancing girls and the juggler and, the, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, another act that comes out. And now the master of ceremonies comes out, and he says, while Miss West is on stage, there'll be no serving of food or drink. So if you want anything, please order it now. <laughs> and now here's a new young comedian, Don Adams. <laughs> And I walked out into World War II. It was pandemonium. And people are running and screaming and order drinks. And I do my 11 minutes of straight lines. Well, nobody ever looked up. They, they, they ate their food. They never looked up. I did my 11 minutes of straight lines. I walked off. They didn't even know I was on. Now I'm sitting in the alleyway and I'm saying to myself, I, I'm through in the business. It's all over. I've got to commit suicide. I don't know. And the band comes. And they say, come into the band room. And they said, we know you're depressed, but you're going to do a terrific second show. I said, how am I going to do a terrific second show? They said, we're going to give you something. You're going to go out there and be so fan. I said, I don't drink. They said, this isn't a drink. This is a cigarette. I said, a cigarette? Now, they gave me this bomber, which looked like the Hindenburg dirigible. And they said, you just smoke and pull it into your lungs. And when you go out there, you will be fantastic. And I'm on this bomber. <laughs> Showtime comes. Four musicians are carrying me because I am paralyzed from the toes up, right? And I start screaming at the top of my lungs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Like a fight announcer. I'm screaming. And the place is pandemonium. And everything went out of focus, totally out of focus. And when I came to, I had been on stage nine minutes screaming, good evening, ladies <laughs> You must understand that, I mean, the place was you could hear a pin drop. I mean, people were like this with the spoons in the mouth. Waiters were like this. And you're I mean, the whole ladies. place was, and I walked off, and I said to the band, how was I? They said, fantastic. The band left. Never seen you better. Now, the payoff on the story is that, that William Moore and the Morris agent comes to me and says, I said, I know, I'm fired, I'm packing my stuff, I'm getting out of the business. He says, no, Miss West loved you. <laughs> and I didn't realize until years later that Mae West was doing a comedy routine, and she didn't want a comedian on that was funny. Hold on. So she got one that was not <laughs> funny. <laughs> but, but hung, but hung over. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. We'll be right back. Stay where you are.